everyone. I uh, I hope everyone's doing fine. And I've not uploaded some video for a long time now. Uh, it's mainly because I moved to Japan, and I'm pursuing a doctoral uh, doctoral studies now. And I've been very busy for the past few months. Anyway, um, I'm I made this video just to inform you of me. I I thought of a some series that I can do. Uh, as a something part time for me, like uh, maybe just a passion project of mine, and this video series is inspired uh, a little bit from one of the subjects that I studied in the university here, uh, numerical methods of uh, engineering. Well, it's for mechanical engineering, but it it it's generally applies to any uh, differential equation. And for for the final requirement. We were required to uh, like simulate, model and simulate a physical phenomenon. So I chose tr uh, transmission lines from electromagnetics. And it kind of reminded me of how I studied electromagnetics when I was an undergraduate. Where it's not enough that I just saw the solutions, did the math, and all of that. I also tried to simulate it in a uh, MATLAB or something. Yeah. Or octave, some something that's accessible to me before, and um, because of this aid, this tool of using MATLAB or octave, I was able to verify my solutions by visualizing them. And uh, maybe uh, this this video series basically something like that, studying electromagnetics with uh, kind of like a numerical analysis aspect. So. I'm going to like solve some electromagnetics problems and then observe them using Octave. Okay? Octave is uh, like a free version of MATLAB. So anyone can uh, install it in their computer and uh, do some calculations. Okay? It's less user-friendly, but uh, it gets the job done. Okay? So uh, this video series is basically for uh, those who want to study electromagnetics, uh, the basics of electromagnetics, okay? And the prerequisite may be uh, a little bit of programming, so the uh, use of for loops, if-else statements. Um, MATLAB, uh, sorry, Octave is easy to use. It uses matrices, however, so there's also um, uh, a prerequisite knowledge is needed if you, you should be able uh, to at least multiply uh, matrix matrices because it uses matrix matrices for calculations. That being said, um, I just want to share how I studied electromagnetics in this YouTube channel, and I hope you get something out of it. So uh, le let me give you an example of what you will see in this video series. Okay. So this is an example of. Uh, the, the codes that can be used to visualize uh, when you're studying electromagnetics, okay? For this one, it's just uh, a visualization of the cylindrical coordinates, okay? Right here. You can plot it using octave, right? For this one, uh, if you run it, it will, it, it calculates basically your surface charge density, okay? So what it does is it gets a very small point from the surface charge density, okay? And uh, you can make it big enough, very big enough, so that you can approximate it as an infinite charge density. And then you, you add the electric field contribution of each point that you get from the charge density. So that's what the for loop here is all about. It basically adds the electric field contribution of each point. Uh, of each point on a charge density, okay? And then you'll be able to get your three electric field components and then plot them. So let's run it so you can see. So this one actually takes a long time because uh, it's a big system, right? And that's expected when you're doing numerical analysis, actually. So this is the result. So maybe you can't see it, but maybe we can rotate it. There we go. 
So this is the result when you have a surface charge distribution. Okay, so this is the surface charge distribution here. The electric field is pointing away from it if the surface charge density is positive. Okay, so that's another example. Uh, another example is this. So uh, what this does, what it sorry, <clears throat> what it does is it just visualizes the poten equipotential line versus the electric field. Okay, and uh, for the equipotential line and electric field, we know that they should have uh, orthogonality. So the electric field lines are pointing towards uh, your decreasing uh, potential lines. Okay, so you get more negative. Electric field is going towards the negative uh, potential, right? Or the lower potential, basically, right? So that's another one of your visualizations. Okay, the example is this heat map. Uh, it basically plots the surface charge density that is induced on an infinite ground plane if you hover a line charge density all over it. So uh, if you run it, you will see this heat map right here. And it's just, yeah, there we go. So the black line is your charge density is uh, more negative. So what happens, what happened here is that you put a line charge density at the center of your infinite ground plane. It induces a charge on that ground plane. And as you can see, the charge is more concentrated near the line charge distribution on the surface. Okay, so very interesting. And uh, first you solve, we can, we can first solve the problem and then verify it using this simulation right here. Okay, so it's very interesting to see, uh, to visualize what you're, what you're solving in electromagnetics. Okay, and what I'm kind of proud here is uh, if you have a transmission line, okay, you'll be able to like simulate it numerically and animate the, like how the voltage travels in this transmission line. So let's try to run this. Okay, it won't graph anything. Okay, it will just tell us when it stops. Okay, so now it's done simulating. We can animate the movement of this, uh, of how the voltage travels in a transmission line. Okay, so that's you. The, this function right here, animate plot. Okay, and this is how your like your voltage moves in a transmission line when you just try to turn it on with a kind of a step function. So once it reaches the load, there's some reflection back. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is uh, this is very amazing to see and observe how voltage actually propagates in a transmission line. Okay, based on the physical equations, I based this from the telegrapher's equations. Okay, so I can link the video to the tele telegrapher's equations discussion uh, in the co in the uh, description of this video. Okay, so those are some examples of. What you can, what what we'll have in this video series, okay? So there's actually no structure here. I'll just uh, solve problems and then uh, encode them in Octave and show you how they're visualized. Okay? If you have any requests, you can comment it in the comment section below. Okay, so that's all for this uh, for this video. Uh, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next meeting.